in the late 90s, I started noticing that it became increasingly more difficult to win in federal court. The doctrines were hideous. Um, you've got, uh, you must show that there's racial animus or intentional discrimination before you can show that the 14th Amendment has been violated. You used to be able to make that showing just by showing disparate impact, which is what you would use under uh, the employment discrimination laws. You saw McCleskey versus Kemp basically saying, yeah, we know there's racism in the criminal justice system. We're not going to do anything about it. We also saw that there was tremendous court packing uh, on the right. When Drew and I were baby lawyers, if a Republican was appointed to the bench, you felt you had a decent shot. Warren Burger did the Griggs versus Duke Power, very important case in terms of employment discrimination. But the right wing started seeing that people like us could win in the federal courts. So they started having an ideological litmus test before people could get appointed to the bench. You had to be anti-affirmative action, anti-choice, um, anti-government. You also saw the, the rise of the Federalist Society. There was no Federalist Society when I was in school. That's a direct pipeline from the law schools to the clerkships to the federal bench. Um, and so it became increasingly difficult to really win in the federal courts. Also, we saw that the right wing was very brilliant in messaging. They get people to act against their interest. The estate tax is the death tax. People who are taking jobs offshore and the 1% are the job creators. You listen to Fox News, they, they basically really do have a, a memo every morning that says, here are the talking points. You'll hear the same thing being said over and over and over. They're brilliant. They know the words that they can use to make people dislike progressive people. We also felt that the progressive community was disconnected, that we're in our silos. LGBT folks here, environmental people here, choice people here, race people here. We all share a common vision of the world we're trying to create. So we need to get out of our silos. So my organization, which is primarily a racial, racial equity organization, was very involved in the Prop 8 campaign. We filed in, on, the, on the no side. We filed briefs in Perry versus Schwarzenegger. We filed briefs in environmental justice cases. We hope that the LGBT community will file a brief in the Fisher case, which is up at the Supreme Court, which is, I think, their attempt to try to really eliminate any race consciousness under the 14th Amendment. Kennedy is the key. So we, are, we um, use the analysis that was put forth by Baird Rustin, who was Martin Luther King's gay aide, who talked about something called the Grand Coalition. And the idea is we're all in this together, and we need to have each other's backs. Someday it will be your issue that I'll have your back on. Another day I'll say, hey, brother, I need you to support me.